Hey, what's up YouTube? Houston here. And for those of you just finding my YouTube channel, welcome. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell. For those of you that's been following me and supporting me, salute. And for my favorite patrons, always double salute. Now, today's video, we're going to be talking about the best seven bad credit pre-approval credit cards. Now, with these here credit cards, and you have bad credit, you don't have to pay all these activation fees, right? And that's the bigger thing where a lot of people, they're trying to find uh, pre-approval credit cards without getting a hard inquiry and having to pay those extra activation fees. So these are the best credit cards that you want to go after. Now, here's the thing about it that I want to tell you all that's going to really help you impact your credit so that you start being able to get uh, qualify for higher lines of credit is to start utilizing these services out here. There's Grow Credit, uh, there's a Perch, which is under another company now, but these companies are actually reporting like if you're using Hulu, Netflix, Spotify, if you're paying your utility bills, they'll help report your utility bills. Uh, car insurance, gym membership. You would start. You need to start using these type of services to help build up your credit profile, okay? It's a benefit to you. Then you can add on pledge loans or credit builder loans. Then, of course, you have Experian Boost and my FICO uh, Ultra Boost. Then you can remove inquiries, and we talked about that in other videos, adding authorized users. People, authorized users still work. They still work to this day. Um, again, one other thing you can do if you're using your debit card a lot, then if you're using your debit card a lot, people, here's the thing about it. Sign up for an extra debit card app because it's reporting to Equifax and Experian or One Financial. One Financial. So they can report your debit card transaction. All right? Now, another thing to get an extra... 45 to 60 point boost in your credit score is start reporting your rent. So if you're paying your uh, uh, rent with your debit card, you want to sign up with like companies like Plastic and then or sign up with one of these other companies and what they'll do, they'll pick up that data. Now also what's going to do is going to help age your credit file as well up to two years, and that would help you qualify for a mortgage, especially for you guys that are trying to get into the real estate game. If you're trying to get into the real estate game and trying to get a, uh, a FHA loan or trying to just show that you have the ability to make mortgage payments, this is where you want to start, all right? Now, the credit cards that you want to do with a pre-approval so you don't get the hard inquiry, you don't have to pay any upfront fees, is you want to start with the Patel. Patel, for you, if you have bad credit, then they're going to start between three hundred to 5000 If you have a more established credit, they're going to start you between three hundred up to 10000 And it reports to all three credit bureaus. And the interesting thing about it, it's a soft pull FICO 9. They're really, even if you don't have a credit score, you still can qualify for this card. They're not really focused on... Um, the credit score, they focus on cash flow. If you have a steady job, if you've been at your place of residence long, your education level, all of those things is what's factoring with these alternative lenders other than the banks and credit unions. Then you have TOMO. Again, TOMO is one of those cards go from 100 up to 10,000. And I'm telling you guys, these are the type of cards you want to go for, especially if you have bad credit and you're trying to rebuild your credit. Start taking advantage of these cards because I'm going to start showing you strategies on how each of these cards, you can get multiple trade lines out of just one card. Now, you have Credit AI. Again, Credit AI, if you have a income coming into your bank account, they'll give you a $1,500 primary trade line. Then you have all five, MasterCard for bad credit, okay? They start at 1000 After six months, it doubles to 2000 all right? Now, again, these are credit cards that you can do pre-approval with no impact on your credit file, 
Okay, so no hard inquiry on your credit file. Now, here's the thing about it. With some of these companies, you must know this, okay? They may not check your regular credit score. Some of these companies, they may check um, LexisNexis. They may check your, um, excuse me, they may check your, um, sorry about that, guys. They may check your LexisNexis, okay? They may check your uh, Factor Trust, which is owned by TransUnion, okay? Uh, they may check other third-party credit bureaus, but at the same time, like I say, you have a higher chance of being approved for these cards and there's no hard inquiry. Then you have the ZERB. Now, with the ZERB card, usually they want you to be a college student okay in order to get this card or whatever but they do still show flexibility so if you don't have any credit you still can get it and again all of these cards are no deposit you don't have to put no money up front in order to get these cards so they are unsecured cards no deposit type of cards then you have opportune now Opportune, I've definitely got a strategy for you that's really going to help you in another following up video. But with Opportune, okay, they have this Visa card. They have the Opportune Personal Loans and they have the Opportune Visa card. All right. And there's no credit score, limited credit history or better. Right. No security deposit. Now, they do automatic credit line increase depending on how you actually use the card. Anybody that's been approved for the Opportune card, put a comment below. Let me know. Do you like the card? How, did you get a decent amount on the card? Have you been using it? Did you get a credit line increase? Let me know so that the community can know what, how they should be approaching this. Now, the last one is Apple Card. All right. Yes, the Apple card. So there's no um, hard pull, no, no upfront fees or whatever. But the up, Apple card is definitely a card that you want to use. OK, you want to leverage it. But the thing about it, what I would do is, again, those trade lines I was telling you. Now, here's the thing about it. Those other credit cards, I would probably get maybe about three to four max on those other cards. Then I would go for the Apple card, okay? That's what I would do. Because you know when you get into the Apple card, you're going to go for higher limits, as well as the Patel card. So with the Patel card, the opportunity to get a higher limit, right? So the thing about it is in terms of your DTI, your debt-to-income ratio, it's very important. And most of these cards... Your debt to income ratio it plays a bigger factor. And with banks, when you're trying to go to a bank to get a, a credit card and you have bad credit, guess what? Even if you have good credit with a bank, um, their maximum debt to income ratio is 55%, banks and credit unions. But with like alternative lenders, like with Apple, other fintech companies and stuff, it's 75%. So that's the reason I'm telling you to build your credit file, you don't need a whole lot of those small limit credit cards. Three, four max, and then go for the Apple card. But make sure that you add some of those other trade lines I suggested to you because that's going to put you in a better position so that way it can help bump you up to start getting access to larger lines of credit. Now, if you don't know the difference between your FICO 8 credit score and your FICO 9, click the link in the description, get your real credit file. Schedule a one-on-one 30-minute consultation. Let me help you go over it so you can understand how to leverage your credit file to be able to get access to more funding. Thank you.